everybody. Hello. Got a group. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the um, January 27th Hadley School Committee meeting. Um, is there a motion to call the meeting to order? Motion to call the meeting to order. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any adjustments to the agenda for tonight? No. Everything as it is. Great. All right. We'll move right into presentations and discussion items. We've got quite a few tonight. The first one is presentation of service learning trip squads abroad for Honduras. Uh, Senora. Hi. Hi. I, um, <clears throat> as you know, I'm this year going to Costa Rica with the company, and uh, Dr. McKenzie and I went on a trip with through squads abroad to Honduras in October, and um, it was phenomenal. And I couldn't wait to start bringing my students. And the nice thing about this particular company is that they are actually associated with Key Club. They have a connection to Key Club, which is another club I've just begun to bring off the ground. Um, and I guess a few particulars about it. It's definitely service learning, as is the one I'm doing this year, but I think this one is a little bit more intense, which I'm very excited about. Um, there are three components to it. You would either go global education, global health, or global STEM. And I was talking to Mrs. Duncan about her interest in running a STEM trip, so we might try to double up and to, to get more interest for that and, and go the STEM route. The man who um, is, runs the company, Eric Werner, is, um, we, uh, we went on the trip with him, and he told me that um, even though we were going in 2021, he would give us the 2020 price. So that would be $990 per student. He said, that's without flight. He said that um, he thinks we could think about probably a ballpark of $1,800 per student. There's also a $1,500 group contribution fee that we think we would raise purely through fundraising. Um, and the global STEM would be uh, like implementing water, safer water systems in the country. And we work directly with the engineers in the country, which is really nice. The, the actual service what we're really doing is just helping the people who are already there. It's so it's not like we're there to take over. They, we, they have experts there. So I'm hoping to do it in April of next year. I've already done a survey, and I think I have enough interest. Okay. Great. So that's the service trips on April 21. Yes. And currently there's nothing else that's on the schedule for April. Spring Correct. 21, so except so. Um, February the Florida Coral Reef. Yeah. Which the Florida trip um, was not enough interest at the parent meeting. So I don't know if that's going to happen. And that's why I thought to team up. Maybe it wasn't exotic enough that they wanted to travel further. To, so um, I was going to see if there was more interest in that. To pair that up. Yeah, to pair it together. And then if you ended up going in that direction, you would just... You could I had a Florida trip, yeah. I don't, there, was, yeah. there was only a few kids. Okay. And then ultimately they didn't actually sign up with the company. So okay. um, I was going to rethink the whole trip. But this is an easy, this is a good teaming up, been, I think right. it's yeah. a good answer, so. Yeah, thanks for providing the packet of information. Sounds oh, sure. Like really um, uh, purposeful and uh, I think educational trip. That Absolutely, yeah. A lot out of. Mm -hmm. Any questions about it? Yeah. Great, okay. Um, do we need a roll call vote for this? No. Service trip squad squads abroad uh, in April of 2021. Motioned. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Great. All right. Next on the presentation agenda is Nature's Classroom and the Boston Field Trips. Yes, so okay. I'll set Nature's Classroom. So again, I forget how many years now. I've been going since 2006, <laughs> actually. Um, back to Ocean Park, Maine. Um, for June 1st through the 3rd, and it's a similar program that we have every year, although we take feedback every year, so what is offered for the classes um, in the main site is pretty much the same as the Wakefield site. We've added a lot more of um, the intertidal zone because that's where they are versus the, um, they still see some of the, the estuary and the salt marsh um, inland a little bit, but there's a lot of intertidal zone stuff that they can ex experience, which they weren't able to at um, uh, the Wakefield site. So um, the cost has actually, in over the years, the cost of actually Nature's Classroom itself has barely increased at all from 2006 to now for us. It's $261 for the actual program fee, which I think is 
since the inception of it was is like five dollars more than wow. 2006, which I think is awesome. Um, and then we do have to pay $1,000 for the registered nurse, and then um, the quote estimated for the bus this year is um, $3,200. Um, there's estimated 40 kids, although there's more than 40 kids in the seventh grade. I hope they all come with us, but um, the, all the prices are done off of 40 kids going. The total is um, 366 per student right now. Um, we did put a fundraiser earlier in the year, but we are going to do another one. Um, the, a similar fundraiser, but the pop is going to be a pop-up, so all the money and all the delivery of the popcorn goes directly to the houses. We're going to try that um, to do that again. Um, and then also last year and the year before we put on some dances and that money went directly to um, the overall cost of the trip. Um, supervision this year will be more than in past years. We actually need to bring six chaperones this year. So um, we are going to be asking parents for the first time to come with us and we have an email drafted to send out um, once approval to ask for some uh, parent chaperones to go with us this year. So we'll keep the, the ratio still be a one to eight students. Then also the nature's classroom teachers that are there will still um, be there. Are there any questions about nature's classroom? Yes. Uh, just a quick question. First of all, a comment. Um, yes. My two out of three kids have loved going to Nature's Classroom. Yes. They, it's such a wonderful experience for them. Um, I'm really glad the school system offers this. Um, I did get some feedback from last year's trip. I don't know if our location is still the same as last year. Mm -hmm. um, about some of the girls, well, uh, I was speaking to a girl demographic, being um, surprised about the nature of the location and how religious it was, I guess. It was like a... Uh, oh, well, all the sites... Oh, sorry. Well, it was just a... It, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter one way or another. Mm -hmm. it's, it sounds like a wonderful location, mm -hmm. but also very, like, at a, uh, um, at a place that is one denomination, and the, the girls weren't expecting that, at least, and maybe a, um, some conversation around context pre before going might just help, you know, explain. We definitely can, because all the nature's class, they've always been held at YMCA camp, so okay. it's, uh, that's, uh, that's nothing new, but this is the first time it's come up that why it's a religious camp, um, at a religious camp, although there's no religion at all in the program. Right. Um, and, so and just, just to a little to say, yeah. okay, well, this is, a, this is the context, and yeah. this is the religion, and of course, you yeah. know, uh, just, just acknowledging it, at least. Yes. In relation to the facilities, is that? Yes. yes. What, what right about the facilities? Facility? Like big. Oh, oh, the facilities themselves, I think, were no. fine. Oh no, but the, what did they see at the oh, facility I, that made I them? I understand that there were crosses and other. Oh such yeah, things. in the dining area, maybe. Right. right. Okay. And so it just, it was, it took them aback, okay. I think, and it wasn't. Uh, I mean, they're, uh, in particular, the girls that I'm aware of are around that regularly. They just mm -hmm. weren't expecting it at a nature's classroom. Okay. Like, so maybe just a I conversation. I make sure they know that we're just, the, the program is leasing a camp. Yes. That is a religious camp so in you the might summer. Do this, <laughs> and you might that, but, but of it's, course, okay. it's a, yeah. we're a community of yeah. all denominations, and you know, definitely. that's all. I could definitely do that awesome. with them. And with the parents. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, definitely. Is there any other? I appreciated the outline connecting it to the curriculum. I mean, as as with every year, it just seems like this is so closely aligned to a lot of yeah, the content yes. that the kids are, and, and the kids look forward to it. It seems like this is a long-standing tradition. Um, so that's great. Cool. Any other questions? Is there a motion? Motion to approve Nature's Classroom. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we have both um, Ruth Barba and Adam Hunt right here to actually present the eighth grade trip. Mm -hmm. okay. so. Good evening, school committee. We'd like to propose an eighth grade trip to Boston this June 4th and 5th, one overnight, with as many um, eighth graders as are willing and able to go, uh, hitting spots on the Freedom Trail, mm -hmm. State House, mm -hmm. Science Museum, Charles Playhouse, Daniel Hall. The Holocaust Memorial. Holocaust Memorial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's all a busy couple of days. Uh, and hitting one one overnight busy days. Yeah, we had a couple of couple of packed days, um, and uh, with a cost of no more than three hundred and forty nine per person, depending on 
uh, room situations and number of students attending. Um, I'm not really sure what else to say, but if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. We have itineraries available upon request. We have uh, standards connected across the curriculum for all of our four subjects, math, English, history, and science, for all of the sites listed. <coughs> It's going to be very fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the students hopefully will meet their legislators, their state legislators. Yeah, We're cool. looking forward that's to that. If, if that's not possible, we look forward to meeting with their staff members. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think that that's going to be a, a huge learning experience for them. Really it's going to be experience. very beneficial. Yeah. I'm not sure that's been available in the past to tour the state house or to meet yeah. state representatives. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully that will play out well. Have we done past trips to Boston? I'm just curious. Yeah, it's, um, I feel like my son has. The old, the, my oldest has. Yeah, the the eight grade used to go to Boston, yeah. and then they went for a few years um, to New York instead right. of Boston. Okay. And now we're going back to Boston. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Cool. Yeah, I think they only course have in the past. Yeah. yeah. Great. So one overnight costs. And this is June, this June? Yep. Okay. Any questions? No. Yeah. Oh, sounds fine. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be very excited to go. <laughs> yeah. Motion to support the trip to Boston. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, thanks for joining. Great, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Sounds nice. Thank you. Okay. Great, so we are now on item 3C, student presentation, uh, GSA name change. Slide students. Hi, um, I'm Ada. This is Eli and this is Kyle and we're part of the GSA at Hopkins Academy. Um, and our proposition today is to change our name from the Gay Straight Alliance to the Gender Sexuality Alliance. Because uh, we feel it's, the Gender Sexuality Alliance is more inclusive, inclusive of everyone's identity. And um, I think the Gay Straight Alliance is too narrowly defined to kind of make everyone feel included in the club. And, um, we feel that more students will be inclined to join and feel accepted in the club if we change our name to the Gender Sexuality Alliance. So, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> Excellent. Actually, you um, have the authority really, to make that decision, the students and the advisors who run the club. But I'm grateful that you came before the school committee. I had, I think in November or October, I had included your write-up mm -hmm. in a previous packet. And the school committee is always eager to, to hear directly from student leaders in the school about what you're thinking and why you're thinking it. So they don't have to take a formal motion to change the name of your club. But it's no less important that you're here to talk to them directly about what you're doing and why. I think it's great to be responsive and um, willing to you know, change as, as context change and terminology changes and just even um, public perception or student body perception changes. And I think in an effort to try to define it and be welcoming, that that's um, hopefully it will be received very well by, by the student body. Yeah, any effort to be inclusive is always appreciated by us. So we commend you on the move. So good luck. <laughs> Thank you. And plus, you don't have to change your t-shirts. That's right. <laughs> that was the same Very <laughs> That's right. Easy. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Well, thank you for having Thank you. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you the teachers, too. <laughs> <laughs> we love. That's it. Our public is safe. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Hartsbrook School. This is annual. We approve the operating of Hartsbrook School. And just as a reminder, the school committee of the public school district in which a private school is located needs to approve the school if uh, student, if families can be considered meeting uh, state mandates for sending your children to school. That's why you essentially approve the school. That if the school committee doesn't approve the school, then technically the private school will not meet the parent's obligation to um, send your child to school. Right. 
that's why we do this every year. And so the, the, I don't, uh, the entire packet is available for review in my office. I forgot to bring it, but know that I did go to Hartsbrook. It's the only school I have to do the approval on. And I go through all of the documents and do a site visit on all of the items that are listed in, uh, from your policy document. Do you walk around with a, like, white glove? And... <laughs> I love it. It's a lovely, it's a lovely school, and I enjoy this. The, we meet with them often also because of federal grants. Mm. Um, portions of the federal grants flow to different schools, and so we meet with them at least three times a year. Before mm -hmm. Yeah. They don't have a big ceremony welcoming you when you come? No, they're over me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Any, I guess, um, changes or anything of note no. since last time we no. approved it? No. no. Still a Waldorf school. Um, they follow a Waldorf curriculum. And um, not any significant changes in staffing or enrollment or nothing major or substantive, just minor fluctuation. Sure. Yep. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Yeah. Well, uh, the Arts 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 Private school approval. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay. Page one. Grants update. Andy, so, how yes, are you doing? Paul, you had asked about this a couple of months ago, and so it's fine we didn't meet last month. Just a general update on where we are with grants and some of the ones we've been successful with. Of course, you can see these include some in the FY19 as well. They were. Um, at the very, the four, some of them are for FY19, and um, some of them are for FY20. Um, but we have been quite successful on a number of grants, and we have a few that we still are uh, waiting. They've been submitted, but we haven't heard back yet. And the ones that we are um, really waiting on, we're about, we've submitted our final proposal for the Innovation Pathways designation. And we are we will be submitting our final proposal for early college high school. Okay. That's due February 14th. We'll know by the spring if we have those designations for students. And just quickly, the innovation pathways and in both of those they come with money or they come with so authority. So if we get the designation, they don't promise you money, but they do ask for. Um, they have asked us for what we think we might need on the implementation pathway, uh, the innovation pathway. On early college high school, they don't have any space for the budget, for a budget. They don't ask you to um, submit a budget for the upcoming year. But uh, that is a place, I think I've mentioned to you folks, where the governor just really has funded early college high school. In the FY19 budget, so FY19 budget, I think early college high school is somewhere around 1.2 million in FY20. The governor wanted it to be closer to three. House Ways and Means said, no, we'll give you 1.6, I'm estimating here. But really, they weren't going to get much more, between 1.4 and 1.6. They got it all the way up to 2.7 in the FY20 budget. It is a priority of the governor's, and so I know he's looking to support those programs. Okay. Innovation Pathways, they just announced in the paper a number of schools were award, awarded in, uh, implementation grants who had gotten a designation last year. Right. So I anticipate there will be funding to support both of those uh, if we get through stage three, the final stage. Um, but that's where we are with our grants. And there is a, we didn't get that big school safety grant that I wanted, the big federal grant, but there's another one out from uh, stop school safety, it's toward the bottom. I think it's, actually I don't think it's DOE, I think it's Bureau of Justice, but. Um, so I've talked with, a little bit with Granby. I'm also gonna reach out to South Hadley and I'm going to see if a, perhaps a regional proposal might be more competitive um, and put our application in, in a better place, so. Fingers crossed. Well, I gotta get a written, it's due in March. So and the, the early college, we already have, our students already have access to early college courses. How did this change it? So how it changes it is, well, we're hoping that the designation, and I'm, I'm assuming the designation will come with some implementation funding. 
and um, and so it would the, that's what it, that's the biggest change. So students would have access. Now we have students who do through a variety of uh, different programs. Some students are able to access college credits free of charge, but in other cases, they pay out of pocket. Um, this would allow students who were accepted into the early college designation um, into this pathway. It would allow them to earn 12 college credits, at a minimum 12 college credits, free of charge. And their pathway, I believe, would also be designated on their diploma. So the ultimate vision would be that it doesn't mean that every single student has to know precisely what they're going to do, but the vision would be that we would be a pathways campus. What the state mentioned to me is I think there's only one other school in the Commonwealth who that is applying for both designations. Mm -hmm. So most of the time they pick one or the other. Um, so I had a long talk with the folks at the state because they were wondering, well, why don't you just decide which one you want to do? But the governor's office, I've given you the statistic before, the governor's office has a goal that by 2027, 50% of all secondary students will be enrolled in an innovation pathway, an early college pathway, or chapter 74. Um, which is like Smith Vocational. And so I've, I've done the math with you folks that um, we need to have all options on the table given our size or we're really going to encounter threats to our viability. I explained that to the folks at the state. They've been very pleased with our proposals. These are extremely competitive. I mean, somebody said to me they, they couldn't believe that we have been invited into the third round for early college given our size. Um, so the goal I explained to the state would be we would have we'd be a pathway school where students would have the option of pursuing apprenticeship or chapter 74 programs. We wouldn't stop at these two innovation pathways. We'd be looking to expand those further and also uh, or early college high school. And then students really have to commit in about grade 10 to which pathway they think makes the most sense for them and in order to meet all the requirements. Great. And we've had some I've had some <coughs> wonderful phone calls from various businesses and employers, particularly around the innovation pathways, because internships are such a big part of that. So I do have a meeting set up with um, Mr. Shabelli, the um, CEO, uh, not CEO, COO or CFO of uh, Cooley Dick next week. Or I should get the name and the title straight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have it, don't worry, I'll have it all wrapped up. I hope he's not watching now uh, for that. And other folks have reached out, uh, various uh, employers that are eager to talk about how they might set up internships, some great internship opportunities for students, particularly in life and environmental sciences. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Annie, would this be um, an appropriate time to share the notes from the all board yeah, meeting sure. of what I shared yeah. out, because a lot of it did have to do with the grants. Um, we had an all boards meeting last week, <laughs> I'm trying to remember, the 22nd, and um, it was in the cafe, and, and essentially, you know, every board, um, the town tried to represent every board that's, that's there, so, you know, Council on Aging, Park and Rec, um, Cemetery Commission, oh. everybody, library trustees, um, so I attended um, on behalf of the schools, and I did share with them. They, we were asked to share, you know, what our um, goals are for 2020, what some of the challenges are, and areas for collaboration. So I talked a lot about the 2019 accomplishments and building on those. And in that, I talked about the increase in grants and mentioned that in fiscal year 19, we had submitted 24 competitive grants that's in addition to um, entitlement grants, but of those three, only three were not successful. Wow. And so we, to date, we have a 75% approval That's rate. That's crazy. Yeah, so that was definitely, yeah. I think, very well received in terms of... Um, you should play the lottery. Yeah. We're waiting on <laughs> Some are, some are Some submitted. Waiting. Those are the ones that we've all heard back we've heard, on. yeah, 75% yes. approval. That's pretty great. Um, the goal to increase program creation, so talking about multiple pathways, including the um, early child, early college designation, the innovative pathway, uh, the public safety program mm -hmm. creation, and the chapter 74 apprenticeship um, uh, designation. Talked about project lead the way proposal, so enhancing the STEM um, pathway from elementary into high school. Uh, I mentioned about um, students performing well in standardized tests and state measures. Uh, Hopkins Academy being recognized with a college success award again this year. 
and taking on the after school program and trying to build on that, examining ways to potentially include before school care. Uh, we talked about the decrease of school choice out and the increase of school choice in, which you know we've, we've been looking at that and monitoring that to where um, fiscal year 19 receiving was 95, fiscal year 20 receiving is 108. So right. that represents. And we also had, yeah, we also yeah. had six seniors graduate. So it was a big pickup. It was 89 to 108. That's yeah. great. Yeah, so if you account for that, it's really a 20% increase in school mm -hmm. choice. Um, fiscal year 19 sending out, so 65. Um, compared to fiscal year 20, sending out 49. So that represents a 25% decrease. So we're keeping more students in and attracting more talent here and you know, not um, sending them out as much as we were in the past. I talked about um, just areas of attention and challenges for this year, decrease in you know, lower birth rates. You know, we've seen it, the, just the census population decreasing um, capitalization projects, it's exciting, but it's also going to be a challenge in making sure we're, you know, maintaining that, managing that, with communications around that. I mentioned about athletic fields and breaking ground in the summer, the MSBA grant, and just applying again for that. And with collaboration, I did mention uh, the library staff, you know, just having them being very involved in the schools that they've, um, we've had them come to the elementary schools. They've. Uh, We've frequently advertised their programs as well, Park and Rec and the collaboration on the after school program. Um, and then the senior center talking about um, you know, being able to mutually support each other's programs. These are obviously some big initiatives in town that I think as we go through the year, there's gonna be some opportunities. Um, and CPA, um, they were there you know, working closely with them obviously on the support for the fields project. And it, what was nice too was that day we had been um, notified about the Hatfield, the grant with the um, collaboration with Hatfield of $18,000 to specifically look at sharing food services. So people were happy to hear about that. Um, they also mentioned some things, uh, just hearing the different boards talk about their initiatives, you know, we may want to think about some more areas of collaboration. Uh, it was interesting the Board of Health talked about needing support on grants. Uh, looking at, you know, they're just kind of just starting out um, and looking for some success on that. Um, there was a town nurse program that was mentioned, which I don't, I don't know how much, if any, that might, you know, whether there's anything with the school services that might help um, inform that or support that. The Cemetery Commission actually talked about doing a workshop on repairing and maintaining gravestones, and I thought, you know, there are some history buff kids here that would probably love like, I think about, I used to do the etching, you know, we'd go out and do the etching and learn history about families, and I thought, you know, there, that might be an interesting project mm -hmm. for some kids. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, the Finance Committee announced that they had two new members on their committee. They're going to be reviewing, uh, meeting with all of the committees, um, especially us, to review budgets. Mm -hmm. I know that's on the agenda. We'll talk mm -hmm. about that. Um, the Shade Tree Committee talked about... Um, kind of an Arbor Day or, or uh, planting mm -hmm. tree initiative, which might, I think if we could get that hooked in with mm -hmm. the schools, that there are probably plenty of kids that yeah. would be very interested in supporting that. Um, and then finally, Hadley Media, they uh, mentioned that there is uh, equipment and training and um, it's available for free. And so, you know, just thinking about if we had kids that were really interested in media and production that maybe we could figure out how to get them, you know, I'm not, you know, some exposure to understanding it, yeah, and what's available to them and how, you know, think about a student intern who comes and helps to film a town meeting, you know, something like that. But anyways, I thought that it was, it was a nice opportunity to really hear from all of the different boards about what they're, what they're thinking about this year and where their efforts are really being placed. Yeah. Can you share that um, cheat sheet? You oh yeah, no, I'll share the cheat sheet. And we can put that in, and I'll yeah. share my notes. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. You are welcome. Sorry to. Um, I hope that was okay. Oh, it's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I, you know, um, Christian Stanley represented them and talked about some of their activities, and I was like, okay, this is, you know, this is right in line with like the. 
cooler community is grand and the right. environmental um, aspects that we've had, you know, Jack Kelly come and talk to us mm -hmm. about. So a lot of Girl Scouts working on this very thing. Right. And we'd love to get involved with this. That's right. Great. Yeah. great. Okay. Well, thank you for the bird walk down <laughs> the side there. Um, related to grants. So MSBA response and next steps. Yes, so, so MSBA, MSBA, so we did not, we weren't uh, accepted or invited into the statement of interest, but we will apply again. Chris and I had a phone conversation with MSBA, asked them for feedback. They gave us some suggestions about how uh, we could strengthen our proposal. I also realized how competitive, how competitive the process is. A colleague of mine who will remain unnamed said, and I can't believe this particular building wasn't, not ours, but a different district, a different building wasn't invited in. I'm quite convinced that it's going to start falling in on people. I'm like, well, we're not there. Um, so, <laughs> so we did get some good feedback, and we will be bringing it before you for that formal vote we have to do and um, before the select board. Can you we'll try remind again. everyone what the grant is? So this is... Uh, there are two programs, Accelerated Repair, which is limited to what we're not fixing, boilers, uh, windows, and roofs. And uh, this is for the core program, which is everything else. And this, we're hoping, will help uh, fund part of the Univent upgrades and the locker room renovation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. This is also the entity that ultimately uh, if we were to ever apply mm -hmm. for funding for a brand new school, this is the entity. Correct. That funds. Yep, correct. That's the colleague of mine was going for a new school that didn't get picked up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Increase in substitute rate. We do need to do this. Um, you can see that we are um, we're not competitive, which means we struggle to get substitutes. Um, and um, we also need to change it, especially with the changes in minimum wage. So um, I would suggest that um, I think even though we have averages down here for you, um, you could certainly round those upwards a bit. Um, and so where are we in relation to this? Uh, we are currently at. Which has to be 75, 65, 75. 70 and 75. 70 and 75. Yeah. And license, license. 70 and 75. And so, like, I mean, a lot of times we compare ourselves to brand new or just, I, I mean, I'm trying to think, are the, the highlighted ones here just more local in mm -hmm. terms of mm -hmm. proximity? Yes. But not necessarily similar size per se, like classroom size, or do we know? Uh, that I don't know. Well, Frontier Regional is probably quite close. Turner's Falls is probably quite quite close. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure about Belchertown. Some of these have the same for unlicensed and licensed. Do you recommend that we have two different rates or the same rate? Yeah, I think acknowledging when a teacher actually possesses teaching certification, granting that some sort of acknowledgement, um, I think makes sense. Mm -hmm. And this, um do we have a sense of how much we spend on an annual basis on substitutes? We know what we budget for. <clears throat> um, yeah, we typically spend about sixty to sixty-five thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. That's substantial. Mm -hmm. That's seventy-five dollars a day. Seventy to seventy-five, yeah, depending on who does the sub. Mm -hmm. so, so in it's some cases, nine hundred thousand days of substitute teaching a year. In in some cases, we could have. Um, so, for example, when we do the data dates at Haven Elementary School, the teachers are doing data for part of the day, and they have a substitute in their room. So sometimes it's not all sick call-outs. It can be release time for teachers as well. I was just trying to get a sense of for every $10 we go up, for example, how much would that cost? Well, it sounds like if it's 65000 at $75, that's 866 days yeah. times. What are we proposing it go up to? But why not buy ten bucks? Say that's less than five. Well, that doesn't even be the average. Well, that's yeah. So it needs to be over ten percent, right? That would be about seventy-three thousand six hundred. But it'd go up. 
8,000 pounds. Right. Yeah. And we spend that every year? I don't need budget for it. But pretty much, yeah. 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 It's, it's pretty um, consistent. I mean, just to start, I guess I'd propose an 80, 85 to start. I mean, for at least for this year, if we find we're out of whack again next year, let's revisit Bring it. Back. Does that mm -hmm. does that seem like a reasonable approach from the expense side yeah. that we're talking about a seventy thousand dollar or ten thousand dollar increase yeah. at least? That's just in line with Belcher Town and close to Frontier. That makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. We do you have to make a motion on that? Is there a motion? A motion to increase the substitute day rate from. Uh, to $80 for an unlicensed and $85 for license. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It's always good to remain competitive with that. So your next thing, um, it's not your, don't need to vote on the number of slots. We just want people to know that they can start applying. So you just have to vote to participate if you so choose to participate in the school choice program, and then um, people can start submitting applications. I'll ask the principals to give seat recommendations for you for next month. Mm -hmm. All right, so is there a motion to, I should ask, is there any discussion about whether or not we should participate in school choice? Mm -hmm. Motion to participate in school choice. <laughs> Second and All in favor? Aye. 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 Doing well, well in that area. Yeah. We'll continue. Let's continue to keep that going. All right. Okay. So you're going to look at this and not that. This is the Happy Times about budget. Chris and I. This is the new budget. This is the <laughs> new until new until improved. we're done talking about it. Then it's not that much improved. Extra, but like suitcase of money somewhere. But no. Sorry. <laughs> no, right. We can but, see yellows too. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> All right, so I am going to, I know you can read, but this is for the benefit of the viewing public. So what we're looking at right now, and it's really important to underscore how preliminary this is, and that will be made obvious when we look at the things that are kind of unknowns on the expense side. Um, so we have on the revenue side, increase the amount of circuit breaker that we're applying. This year we budgeted $175,000 of circuit breaker revenues. We're looking to increase that to $200,000. And that's um, because we know that there will be an increase in circuit breaker reimbursement. We will get a portion of transportation reimbursed under the new formula. We don't have all of the projections for that, but we are certainly comfortable. Again, we're not even close to public hearing on this budget, but this is our starting point of increasing that to 200,000. Um, you see some slight fluctuations in our title grants. Um, our 240 grant we anticipate should stay roughly the same. We're suggesting applying more school choice, and you can see why, given um, the unknown on the expense side. Uh, the same amount from pre-K revolving. We've been told for a long time that the preschool 391 grant would go away. It is going away, so that's a decrease of $30,000 in grant funding. And um, the 262 grant, which is a preschool grant as well, we anticipate will go up slightly. Um, what you see below, which when we talk about expense, would make more sense. Um, so you see here on this revenue side that in order to, to have a balanced budget based on what we know right now, that it would require almost a 5% increase to local contribution. And um, that's enough to uh, give folks on the town side a heart attack. Mm -hmm. um, so the scenarios in the chart below are if nothing were to change, and we'll walk through some of the things that are unknowns but possibilities on the expense side that are really driving the increase overall. Um, that if we were trying to hit any one of these targets, what the amount we would need to reduce. And the reason that I gave these particular targets, so 2.8 is um, the state revenue growth estimates from the governor's office, 2.3 is CPI in 2019, consumer price index increase, 1.8 is mass budgets, revenue projections, um, and 1.2 represents uh, the increase that the town got in their Chapter 70 funding. So we knew that 
The new formula is a huge win for large urban districts. For example, I think Chickabee got $11 million to go out of money. Um, whereas uh, our town got uh, $15,600. Um, so what's happening on the expense side? So I talk mostly about the billets that increase district administration. That actually because <coughs> Approvals to increases were done after public hearing of the budget. They were done in the summer after the start of the fiscal year. The increase actually represents two fiscal years. Um, so it was FY20s and, a, and uh, a possible FY21. In FY20, we used the management services for our bookkeeping services while we figured out how much of an FTE we needed. And we believe we can get by with the 0.6 bookkeeper rather than a 1.0, so that line on the expense side went down slightly. District academic leadership shows an increase, but that's where we reallocated an English language arts teaching position, a portion of that over to a district-wide curriculum position. Um, and you can see that in FY19, it was full-time teaching, no curriculum work. This year we did a reallocation, so it was 0.53 teaching, 0.47 curriculum work, and in FY21 we're proposing 0.14, so still teaching a course and the rest of the time uh, curriculum work. Elementary and secondary teaching services reflect a decrease from when we had public hearing on the FY20 budget of 2.36 FTEs. And where do we get those from? We did not, uh, when the math coach retired at Hadley Elementary, we did not replace that position. Our art teacher is also certified in math. Uh, Jen Dowd was very creative with the schedule and was able to utilize somebody who's certified in math without reducing any of the art offerings. Um, so we did that for the math coach. We also um, will be reducing one FTE because the sixth grade has three classes. So we'll have one gen ed reduction, general education reduction over there. And then the remainder is that reallocation from the ELA position in the high school over to the director of curriculum. In terms of that, um, we will most likely not have to do any sort of notification of reduction in force because um, a qualified member of the bargaining unit could apply. We also have a retirement happening at the elementary school this year, at the end of this year. So a qualified person in the bargaining unit could apply for that open position, thereby not necessitating a reduction in force because of the graduating class. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and let's see, paraprofessionals, uh, that, that line decreased from when we had the public hearing on the budget, primarily due to changes in IEPs, but also students with one-to-ones who may have been school choice students that returned back to their home district or moved on to another district. Um, Professional development increases represent expenses for uh, University of Massachusetts consultants who have assisted us with multi-tiered systems of support in academics and positive behavior interventions and supports. Other instructional services, there's a very large increase there. This includes expenses for special education contracted services for transition services. Um, so that means when students have completed all their coursework here but they have not yet uh, received a diploma, um, they are entitled to services until they turn 22. Um, also, we had talked about um, a team chair position, which has not yet been filled. And I have purposefully put that in contracted services, because if we found ourselves in, in hot water, that's rather than having it uh, somebody that then has to turn around and be laid off, which costs the town money on the unemployment side, because they sell funds through unemployment. Um, we anticipate. Uh, uh, significant increases we anticipate right now to special education tuitions. And I'm going to give you an example of what we mean by unknown. So right now we have another community that believes that due to um, where parents live, right, so parents live in a couple different communities, they have filed, the other district has filed for something called an LEA assignment, local education agency assignment. And um, the state will decide which town is responsible entirely for that tuition. If they decide we're responsible for it and they tell us that in March, then we pick up the entire thing for next year. That is uh, just about $80,000 without transportation. Um, 
And uh, so across the board, we've uh, seen some increases in tuition expenses. Uh, we did see a decrease in health services function. We did not replace the nurse leader. Um, we see increases in transportation reflect additional funding for repairs and maintenance, which is really crucial because we did not get approval for the bus uh, that we asked for. Um, we decided to put in the operating budget how we subsidize the food services budget annually, so that's now reflected in the budget. Athletic services, there is a small amount um, that is to uh, pay somebody a stipend to do some site management, so Eric does not have to do every single game. And then the other uh, pieces, COLA and step increases for coaches, but also increases to contracted services, specifically um, referees, officials, and the trainer. Some, we're projecting some increases in heating oil. Vocational enrollments went down, that's great news, so thank goodness um, we're seeing some positive things on the choice side. And I already mentioned special education tuition payments. So the total projected increase to operating expenses at this point is 365, 243. So of this, 352,595 dollars represent increases in special education expenses, almost 296 thousand dollars potentially in tuitions, and there could be 57,600 for a team chair. As it stands right now, if all of those things came to fruition and nothing else changed, the expenditures would be looking at a 4.31 percent increase. Some other additional information, um, which this is just information I, I talk with the town about when <coughs> we go before the town. So the cherry sheet estimates, which anybody can find on Department of Labor, uh, or DLS, Division of Local Services, Department of Revenue, DLS, DOR. You can see uh, cherry sheet estimates. They're called cherry sheets because before the internet, they were printed on a pink sheet of paper. People always ask that, and they've never lost the name. That's why it's a cherry sheet. Now it's actually a white internet screen. <laughs> um, so they're estimating, because they just carried over, that the town will uh, spend 326373 in school choice sending tuitions. We know that we have four students who are now choicing out that will graduate in 2020 if nothing changed. That actually choice out tuition would be 300, just about 301 thousand uh, dollars. They are assuming that charter school expenses for FY21 net of charter aid will be almost 594 thousand dollars. However, again, um, we know who the seniors are, and so if charter stayed stable after uh, the seniors had left, but also um, since the October 1 count, actually that's what I included here. What I know for a fact is since they took this count, we've had four students return from charter schools and come back to district. Um, so that expense, assuming that stayed stable, would not be what's estimated. So the governor's estimating that the town will have expenses of 900 and let's call it $920,000. Our estimates are closer to 838, which means that potentially the town would be to the good about $80,000, but that's, you know, that's a lot of ifing that you just heard from me. It's ifing based on actual now data, but people can make different decisions at any time. Um, so I walked you through some of those changes of where we're at right now. Um, and uh, so what if, in fact, um, my, my questions for, for you all are in terms of providing the town with a number, which I need to do before February 4th. Uh, your recommendations for how you'd like me to proceed with that. Uh, a good question, I mean, we can also, I did ask David Nixon, uh, is there a target that the select board is looking at or the finance committee is looking at in terms of a percentage increase? Sometimes towns will say, do not, nothing more than this. And the only direction they had given was level service, and I can say this is absolutely level service. You heard me run through the, uh, the full-time equivalents that had actually been cut. Um, so uh, it's mostly, as you see that, it's being driven predominantly by tuitions, um, which is level service. That's not additional services, it's just an additional expense without additional services, at least for our district. Um, so of course, if that LEA assignment was in our favor, if a couple of tuitions that we have questions about, if they didn't actually 
if it didn't go as, as, it, as we anticipate it could. Um, that would then, um, that represents, those two things represent about $157,000 of expense. So if they didn't come to fruition, the local contribution increase would be 185, 415, or 2.6% increase. It's a big if, but if that happened. If um, we thought about how we can use um, the director of curriculum and to, to try to support all across the district, whether it's students with disabilities and their programs, their instructional programming, and their curriculum uh, needs, and we thought that 57,600, that would bring the increase down to 1.8%. Um, so those are, I just wanted you to know that Chris and I have been thinking if the town were to say, well, here's the ceiling, and we still, of course, if the tuition's come to fruition, there's, if you have to do that, where might we look to make some adjustments? We have been trying to run through what that might look like. Um, we're not making a thousand different scenarios until we have more information, but we certainly are thinking about it. Um, so again, their direction is, has been level service, and um, although, and then I, how would you like us to proceed in terms of giving a number to the town? And so this is a preliminary number for them as they start doing early planning. Mm -hmm. And it's an internal to them, the finance committee. Discussion. Well, it's it's not nothing that's really internal no. in terms of you know it's a public it's discussion public. and then, yeah. yeah. I see it as a starting point. I mean, we've always talked about what's estimated, what's known, you know, mm -hmm. versus what's variable. And I think it's really a matter of if this is the reality, this four point seven three percent change. What are we able to kind of go in there with as a, you know, given this, we can think creatively around the district uh, position mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and as compared to, you know, what the CPI would be versus what, you know, kind of revenue growth mm -hmm. and say our target is going to be moving from 4.73, which is the actual estimate mm -hmm. with level service to reconfiguring and coming in at uh, 2.3 or 2.8 it goes a long way as much mm -hmm. as we're able to do that um, including our increase of school choice funding which you know we're increasing from 675 to 700 and it looks like that is where we're at right now in our funding so that's that's it, and estimating what's coming in that I don't think that puts us out of our policy no, it wouldn't. So we could also look to use more school choice. I mean, one strategy I had considered, and I am, I think this Wednesday, Finance Committee meets, um, and I think I'm able to do that. It's not to meet with us. It's just they just have on their agenda to start talking about the budget process. So one thing could be to say, this is what the picture looks like right now, today, if nothing were to change. And then to also ask for feedback of where, at the end of the day, the town really, they get to decide. They're, they're well at the minimum. They get to say, this is exactly how much that we're able to provide in terms of local contribution. And with that information, um, we come back to the table. Seems like outlining some of those options like you have here where, you know, we have some ideas, mm -hmm. you know, that may help bring this down, but that, again, is couched within all of those mm -hmm. um, estimates, and they mm -hmm. are just estimates, they're unknown. We're going to have to give just one number. We can't give yes. a worst case and a reasonable best case. No, there's just one line. I mean, the upside to that is that um, there's just one line that they're looking for is what do you want? David is asking. David sent out the budget book to all the departments, David Nixon, and so for each department, ours is just one line. What is the local contribution number? Because that's all that they have authority over. The school committee right. sets the budget. Right. They have authority over local contribution. They don't have authority over line items. 
This discussion keeps kind of going on though, as, as the year goes on too. Mm -hmm. We keep talking about it. So if this is our preliminary number. My only concern would be giving them a number that's too low and then coming back and finding out that we really can't pull that off and now asking for more. So starting off something that seems more reasonable and attainable and then once we get more solid information and things become more solidified with our numbers, then showing that we were able to accommodate yeah. a lower increase. Is there a risk, though, in that if we were to show what is I would take as the worst case? Is there a risk in showing the worst case? In that we are perceived as um, going after the big ask mm -hmm. and, and without it tempered in mm -hmm. some way with our own sense of like frugality or how we can adjust because we recognize how big an impact it would be to the town. Mm -hmm. so Maybe something in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it, it's transparent to show them this is level service, in fact, with more f an increase of our funding to school mm -hmm. choice to reflect that there's we're able to retain more of that and bring mm -hmm. in more. So given that, we're going to um, look at the variables and what we can do to reconfigure to try to bring that down. But this. I mean, I think it's worth at least telling them transparently what it would be at a level service budget. And again, I would say that, so I can certainly uh, provide this as background information and fill out the budget book. Um, and we often, I mean, I certainly, every time I'm in conversation with the town, I point out the fact that the town is extremely supportive of the schools. They have been extremely generous with the schools. So this is never like a laying down of the gauntlet. This is just a description. If you ask us on January 27th what we know about July 1, this is the best that we can do with as much as information as we can provide as to what's driving this. Now, as I said, a lot of some of those things could change. And as they change, just like we said last year, although we started off with a much better than last year, um, as, uh, as these things change, then we give people that information. Also on the vocational side of things, we have budgeted um, a handful of what I would call placeholders. So you saw our vocational enrollments dropped, and right now um, what we did was budget over the last three years, what has the ninth grade been? And so we took the average of three years, and we created placeholders for that. Um, if far fewer students went to Smith Vogue, that would solve a big chunk of the problem. We wouldn't solve all of it, but that would go a long way. So I'm okay giving them that worst case scenario. So With explaining to them potentially, I mean, I do, I do whatever you folks want, but um, I try to be very clear again that this isn't a and if you can't make this happen, you don't support the schools. This yeah. is in response to the question, what would it cost? And then we understand that at the end of the day, the town has to evaluate all the resources and all the needs and make a recommendation. And um, they have consistently been very generous to the schools. So um, then we'd like to hear back from the town about what that direction is. And it's common in many towns. I mean, I appreciate the fact that they always say, what does it cost to level service everything? But it's not uncommon for towns to say, you've got X percent, period. Yeah. So figure out what you need to figure out. <laughs> Excuse me. Annie, on the second bullet here about the bookkeeping services in mm -hmm. point six, mm -hmm. um, is there any opportunity there to share anything with the town? That something that is already I think Chris would be better to answer that question. Do you think? I mean, they're so lean over there. Yeah, I, I can't really see that they have a third party as an option. Um, <clears throat> I, I really don't think so. I mean, the, the town is kind of in a flux right now because of the town accountant situation. So mm -hmm. I don't really know if that might change in the future, but. You know, they, they don't really have a bookkeeper. The town accountant kind of acts as the bookkeeper there. So I'm not sure how that's going to be handled, quite honestly, with the consultant accountant that they're getting. It. I'd heard that they don't really come into the district, so I'm not sure what the procedure will be with paying bills um, with them. But 
I just can't see that as being an option. Okay. To be honest. I mean, I, we could, uh, the only, although what would it, well, it would help a little bit. Um, we'd probably get that closer to four, not quite. Um, so we haven't filled that position that's in contracted services. We could take that out, and then depending on what it looked like later in the spring, revise the budget again. That would at least decrease it by $57,600. Which, which line is that one? That's in other instructional yeah. services. Oh, okay. That's where you find that. It's on the second, is it on the second page? Yes, the first line of page four of the entire document. Yeah. Yeah. So that would take $57,600 out of that line and bring that down to, well, 75, and then you guys get to do the rest of that line. <laughs> right. 94675 minus 576. That's the team chair. Mm -hmm. But that's, all the that's also the position you were saying we needed to have to be prepared for. No, well, we also, that's also a place where we could um, look at how we could use uh, other district positions in terms of supporting if there's any programming development needs, design curriculum at the secondary level. We have the person who's going into the director of curriculum is somebody who has a tremendous amount of secondary experience. Um, and then if these other what ifs did not come to fruition, we'd be in a much better place. Right? So if some of the tuitions that we think might happen didn't happen, if fewer students went to Smith Folk, we have some more wiggle room. I'm only suggesting that to the point that you were making, Humara. If there's, if there's anything, I can't, I can't, the, that position that we have sitting in the budget, not filled, right? Saying we're going to put a hold on that feels a lot more um, responsible than saying mm -hmm. I'm going to roll the dice and hope that this tuition doesn't come to fruition. Like that's right. sitting in the pipeline as a potential. Um, that seems, that doesn't seem wise to do. I like the idea of does it bring us from our so then that, to what was it? That you said it brings us down to like four. four. Let's see what Instead happens. Instead of 4.73, uh, 342. 342. Does that seem like a reasonable solution from a special ed perspective? I mean, I, I just I don't know enough about it to know if that's if we're going to have a problem with that being unfilled. That, you know. Well, we haven't had it filled. We've been unsuccessful in finding a candidate, and um, we will have capacity in terms of secondary programming, which is where we seem to have the greatest need in secondary programming. That would bring us to 3.9. I think that sounds really reasonable, especially if you're going with a presentation that here's where we are at level service, here's what we can do based on mm -hmm. what we've been unable to fill, and then reevaluate that, just like Annie said, as numbers change. But that That's at least shows them that we're it's a good making conference. vast efforts to, yeah. And that brings it under four. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that would bring it to 3.9. And then we'd still keep trying. Did you get that? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's all good. Okay. And we'll have more new notes next time. So. Okay. Calendar, is that next? Yes, you have an A, B, and C option, but um, I'm really, I'm going to try to limit your choice here and suggest taking A off the table unless you felt very strongly about it. So what are you looking at in A, B, and C? A is um, teachers have, uh, students get a half day and teachers do um, grading at the end of every quarter for a half day. Students typically have a half day. Um, and A is saying, well, that grading could be done on the, district professional development days. Um, and I talked, I was talking with uh, Ms. Canuso about that, and we made a list of the things that staff have either requested, or the kinds of things that we're working on, whether that's positive behavioral interventions and supports, database decision making. It seemed like the time got gobbled up very quickly. 
I, I assume this would be a more attractive option to families, but I, I would not recommend A in terms of uh, meeting the professional development needs of the district. But that's what's happening in A. So instead of having a half day and a curriculum day, just kind of mushed into one. Uh, let's see. And then B and C, it's a half day Thursday and then a curriculum day on Friday. Um, that's B. So Thursday is a half day. Um, that's really what the distinction is in this that you're thinking about. Um, and you're thinking about that. I'm asking you to weigh in in terms of thinking through what, what if families might have a preference. And um, the other way is here's a half day on a Friday and the following week is a curriculum day at the end of the week. So A is yeah. mushing it all together, B is half day Thursday, curriculum day Friday, and this happens three times in the year, right? There's three curriculum days that occur. And, um, and the nice thing is we can <coughs> stagger our curriculum days to coincide with the end of quarters when we would do, like, convene teachers to look at student data and then make decisions about instruction because the town will be able to hold elections in other places because the election schedule is what used to really drive a lot of our PD schedule. Um, so, and maybe I'll say it's really, it doesn't matter, it's insignificant, but I didn't know if you had an opinion about that or anything else you wanted to recommend. Cool. And, yeah, and this has a starting August 26th, students starting August 26th. We waited till after Labor Day to get out quite late. The other thing we didn't do, although I know some schools are talking about it, um, is you see on the holiday break in December, so the 23rd is a completely, it's vacation day, the 21st and 22nd are full school days. So some schools will be taking that entire two weeks off. And I made the assumption, we had this discussion last year, mm -hmm. that that didn't, you folks uh, had said that that would probably be rather inconvenient for um, families. I'm personally in favor for B, to be honest. Um, I think A should be kiboshed, because I think it is important to let teachers have their PDA mm -hmm. without having to try to figure out the report cards as well. And then B, just from like a parent standpoint, at least the way that I'm thinking about it is that if you have a half a day on a Thursday and the next day off, it's all in one week and not broken up into multiple weeks. Mm -hmm. It's just all that one week might be easier. Mm -hmm. I agree. Absolutely. And it makes it a nice long weekend if parents right. decide that they want to take time off and go somewhere. Whatever. Right. Just easier. The one that seems odd is January. Yeah, it is. The Monday off, and then the Thursday yeah. the day, and then Friday mm -hmm. day off. Yeah, I guess we could look at, um, oh, because of where they're, yeah, because that's, that's really where that, week for the, yeah, that's because of where the yeah. order or marking yeah. period would end. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do, too. I agree, too. All right. I think it's a vote that. Is there any motion, motion to approve calendar B? Second. All in favor? Aye. Alright. Thank you. Three options. Yeah. See, the most <laughs> important <laughs> thing I know. <laughs> I get a little crazy. It's like my charts. A lot of calendars. This is. <laughs> okay. Um, movement of Helping Hearts Fund into revolving accounts for athletic fields. This is Chris. Oh, that's me. That's you. <laughs> it's so quiet all night. I have. Um, so I actually have a meeting on Wednesday. Um, I did reach out uh, to the town accountant and town treasurer in December to move the money over. Um, but I was asked when that was voted on at town meeting. Uh, we were told by David that we did not need to vote on it because the money was gifted to us. So. Um, I am going to meet with David, the town accountant and treasurer, on Wednesday morning uh, to go over the creation of the account, and then we can move the funds over. And, okay. and then we, um, as it stands right now, uh, the expenses have been hitting our budget, um, and so then we'll transfer those expenses over to the new account as well. You're talking how the kids right now. This was the Helping Hearts one. Is this their donation? Oh. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So getting Forget Helping Hearts Apparently, in. Yeah, I should have okay. continued to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that is good to know. That is going anyway, to happen. Anyway, that's where we stand with Hadley Kids. <laughs> um, um, we had talked about that it would go into this account here. I know you were going to talk with Helping Hearts, too, about getting it over. If you recall, we talked in the Athletic Revolving, we simply earmarked that money. Yeah. So 
Um, Helping Hearts Sorry. has been the custodian of that money for uh, us, and and we wanted to, especially now as we're moving forward, to get it in a place where we could pay some bills. And I, I kind of held off on that because Eric was getting a couple of donations, and we said to put the money into the Helping Hearts account uh, at that time. I think last week he emailed and asked if he could send mm -hmm. the check home with a student. So I'll just check with him, make sure that you know the, the checks have been sent and everything, and then I can check in with Helping Hearts to make sure that, okay, now you got the checks, they're deposited, now we can make the transfer. Mm -hmm. So you'll see it on the revolving account that you get every week, mm -hmm. every week, every month. And, um, and we'll just have it, we'll probably just create some sort of subcategory sure. so you know what's what. And we still are grateful for and we'll need Helping Hearts because people who want to donate to a 501c3, they still need to be kind of a custodian of funds in this process. Okay. Just getting it over to pay bills. That's great. Start needing to do that. Can I just continue on athletic yeah. fields? Yeah, do your um, thing. Keep going. So um, <laughs> I think we're actually ready to go out to bid. Um, got the final pieces of information. It's um, Paul's like, I'm still alive. Sorry. It's amazing. Exactly. Um, we got the final piece of information that we were waiting on. Chris's uh, hair was not white. No, no. He was 18. Um, <laughs> so tomorrow I'm going to post it um, on the state website awesome. and um, we'll place an ad um, with the newspaper as well and then we'll be official. Um, bids will go out February 5th. And we'll have the opening on the 24th. That's that's the schedule as it is right now. What do you mean the opening? What's the opening? Opening, opening of the bids. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I did it, yeah, movement. So that would help more, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Great it's helpful. It's like the Grammys. Yes. That's the right. Winner. The winner. The winner. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, slightly less exciting, exciting than exciting. the Grammys. No, I'm fairly exciting. more excited. Apparently you've never been to a bid opening. Well, no, I saw, no, apparently I watched the Grammys last night, so. Yeah. It, it's funny because I was working with someone and they had never never done a bid opening. And I said to them, well, why don't you handle the bid opening in the morning of? I said to them, so did you hire the caterer? And, and the guy's mouth just dropped, you know. Do I need a caterer? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. It's really not that exciting, so. That's, that's lots of people. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's basically where we stand on it. That's awesome. Okay, thank you. There. That's really cool. All right. Uh, let's see. Are we at norms? Yeah. Sorry, it's helpful if I do that. Thing, isn't it? So, Developing so. norms as a committee. I think this is even so, timely now because we will have nothing on the committee, right? We so. have um, two uh, positions that are up for the on the election. Mm -hmm. uh, Tara's uh, <coughs> position and Keith's position. And um, Tara, you've indicated you intend to rerun. In fact, we signed your Yay. papers. Yay! <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Thank you. And um, Keith has indicated that he does not intend to rerun. Um, so we will have one, uh, well, we will have two positions on the ballot, and mm -hmm. one hopefully um, uh, somebody else will take out papers. And yeah, we talked about this as a, you know, we all, all five of us have, I think, worked very well together and we are productive and respectful and I think that we are willing to think through all sides of viewpoints and come to resolution and compromise where we have to. Um, and I think that as we've talked about in our retreat, kind of laying out some of those ground rules for working together um, and carrying those forward mm -hmm. that help guide us in whatever the committee composition will be in the future. Um, so thank you for yeah. starting to pull so together. So in your packet, uh, the first document is something I just put together that reflects some of the things you routinely see in our weekly emails, values we talk about in the district, mm -hmm. and what those might look like in behaviors in any committee. So um, our, for example, our belief in diversity, we seek to understand each other. We always ask what of our assumptions are wrong, how would we know, what are other ways of looking at a problem or at possible solutions. Um, so these were just some thoughts that I had. And then Heather had also kindly shared from MASC, um, protocols and best practices for effective school committee meetings. And these might be things that from time to time that if we have new members, that we revisit ourselves about what it looks like to function effectively and what some of those beliefs are and certainly if we ever wanted to weigh in and change some of these things. I like these norms and values. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.
That weekly email is good for something. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Heather, for being a good chair. Oh. A great job. Oh, thank you. There is a minor, minor edit oh, to please. that page, um, and that is under kindness, actions that reflect our belief in kindness rather than yeah, learning. Yeah, Oh, thank you. Yep. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think we should vote on the pay raise for Heather. <laughs> yeah, thanks, right? Zero times zero. I can make that happen right here. And not upset the yellow box. No. These are great documents, by the way. Yeah, they I are. think this is wonderful to leverage. Yeah. This is from MASC. The, the, the second, second daughter ones? Yeah, yeah second those are. Yeah. yeah, they sent out um, kind of a synopsis of it recently mm -hmm. in the calendar. Mm -hmm. You know, that they yeah. sent, and um, I was just like, you know, even just taking some of the higher categories, kind of rolling that up, it might not be a bad way to shape what this looks like yeah. in terms of, uh, it doesn't need to be voluminous here in right. terms of a lengthy thing, but more just what are our guiding principles and norms of how we, how we work together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think any one of us would have that in the organizations that we work in. Absolutely. So why not, you know, kind of try to expect that in the, the volunteer, high-paid jobs that we have here. <laughs> so Annie, what's, what's, is this, could we kind of treat this as like a first read? Sure. And, like we do with policies and maybe bring back, you know, suggested edits. Sure. Or questions. Absolutely. That's good. Any other reactions to it? And thank you for pointing out the yeah, type of no worries. Does it actually make sense as a policy for the school committee? I'd probably look to see if that's um, I mean, if we could get it in policy, that would be nice, because then it'd be right there, out in the open, for Very everybody clear. to see. Right. Um, it'd be interesting to know, and I'm thinking of these MASC listservs that we always get about, you know, where do people put their norms? And, you know, is it in their district policy? I doubt it is, otherwise they would um, give us that as part of the recommended mm -hmm. list of policies. Yeah. So we would really be pioneering new ground, and that's not a bad thing. Just right. because it hasn't been done doesn't mean Right. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not at the MASC level, but maybe there are other districts who have found that <coughs> we did this and we did right. about it in our district policies. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to put the question out there. Because right. then it wouldn't be so wishy-washy. Mm -hmm. right. right, right. I think it would be nice to solidify it. Okay. okay. We'll ask that question. Yeah, I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask the question of the listserv just more. Have mm -hmm. districts um, included this in their district policy and could they for you know, Point me to it. Yeah, great. Okay, and I'll include it in February. Great, okay, thank you. Okay. And is that all of our presentations? Last one, just say okay. yes to this. You say already read yes. it the first all time. Right. Oh, the second <laughs> reading. I've got it. Really public. I have read it thoroughly. <laughs> this is the second reading. The second reading of the policy is were there any recommended edits, questions about the edits? No. Motion to approve. New policies, revised policies. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Terry, you're still on that policy stuff. Terry, you know, it's, it's really demanding because we're really good at getting it together. Very good. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's quite demanding. demanding. It's a long road. It is enjoyable, though, to read. I mean, enjoyable is a strong word, but Very sure. <laughs> it's like, what other real opportunity do you have to? Delve into them and get the legal read. You know I'm going to record myself <laughs> reading the binder and see if Audible picks it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think? There you yeah. go. It's top seller. I'm going to see it in the weekly email. Mm -hmm. Okay. Time for public comment. Right. Right. Crickets. Okay. So. Personnel report. So there was a small. Yes. You just. Um, yes. So we our previous school adjustment counselor had resigned and we hired a wonderful, wonderful school adjustment counselor. She started with us the last week. So that's Lauren McGar. Great. Okay. Um, so that's all we have in the personnel report. Okay. Chris, round two, business manager report. All right, let's hope I can get this one right. Um, <laughs> Expenses, grants, revolving accounts, and capital plan. Okay, so <laughs> expenses are first. Um, there's one thing I just want to point out. This is actually through 1230, not through 123. 
Um, I had some difficulties connecting, but I did have one already run through the end of the year, so I had to use that one, but I had already changed the date on the uh, report template. So, um, And I already made some transfers of expenses um, to school choice and to the grants, um, you know, partial uh, for the grants. Um, I'll have to do more of those in a couple of weeks. I'll, I'll do another round of transfers um, to the grants and to Circuit Breaker. Um, I haven't used any Circuit Breaker yet, so we'll move some more money out of that. Um, and basically, you know, uh, we're, we're still looking good as far as the year goes. Um, you know, again, the typical thing that we'll see, I'm trying to find the page here, of um, some SPED overages, one of them in particular, it's on page five, um, tuition to other public schools where you see we have zero budget and expenses of $9,300. Um, the zero budget is because all of that was supposed to go to circuit breaker. So um, as I transfer the expenses over, you, you know, we'll have the zero expenses to go along with the zero budget. So um, that's pretty much it really for the expenses. Um, as far as the grants go, you can see uh, basically, oh, I'm sorry, I did run, <laughs> I did run um, some expenses to Circuit Breaker, not, uh, not anywhere near what we're going to use for the year, but nevertheless, I did, I did move some over. Um, again, 240 grant, you can see, you know, we had $164,000 for that. I've only transferred 38 so far, so a um, lot of wiggle room as far as that goes. Again, we'll use all the grants by the end of the year. This report will actually um, be expanded. We have more grants to add to it. Um, and so you'll see it probably pretty much take up the full page nice. um, as we add the additional grants that we've received. So um, that's, that's pretty much it for the grants. And Annie, you heard back on the, um, the financial literacy fair grant? I, I'm getting it wrong, but... Yeah, so we received two. I've got to get this right now. Uh, we received, we definitely received a continuation grant for a second financial literacy fair. We also received a grant to um, do curriculum work in financial literacy. So there's a fair and there's curriculum development. So okay. I believe we got funded for both of those. Um, yes, I know for a fact we have the fair funded, and yes, we did get the... Curriculum. I'm, waiting the, a piece, I think. I'm waiting for the civics to hear on the civics grant. That's what I haven't heard yet. My, was that around like 15,000 like total? Those um, Sorry. Just, so Innovation Pathways was, Innovation Pathways was 30, I think. Yeah. I have a look. I have a look. Here you go. It might have been. Do you have that one? This one here? Yeah. You'd think I could remember. Um, Planning and implementation, 11.8. It was approved for 11,800. So the fair is 2,500. The uh, curriculum planning and implementation, excuse me, I just did that wrong. That's Innovation the civics grant. Was Sorry. 15,000. Yeah. Sorry. Financial literacy fair is 7,500. The curriculum planning and implementation, 2,500. The civics teaching and learning grant, we haven't heard back on. That's the 11.8. That's great. Sorry. No, Thank no you worries. I should you think. You think about the right number. It's remember. great to fill up that sheet. <laughs> um, revolving accounts is the next report. Uh, I wish I had better news for the lunch program, but um, you know, I guess we're we're kind of used to it at this point in time. Um, I just wanted to point out, as of last week, the negative balances um, for the lunch program is $5,720. So again, that, that really takes up a good portion of the amount um, that we're seeing as a shortfall here. The downside to this, um, I mean, I, I say it's a downside. But I mean, most of the time, the goal is to have the food services program self-sustained. 
not many districts actually can pull that off at this point in time. But the downside is that, you know, by law, at the end of the year, we have to make the food services program whole with all, any of their negative balances, so that gets charged to school choice. Um, so, you know, that $5,720 that's going to come out of school choice if it doesn't improve. Um, but if it gets worse, that's, you know, that's mm -hmm. certainly not good. Um, so the school choice, you can see from uh, November to December, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, from October to November, can't read the lines here, went from 998 to 661, that reflects the transfer that I did to that account, um, and then, you know, we had some revenue coming in, uh, so... Um, this is actually through 1231. I've been doing it a couple of months behind in some cases because the revenues had not been posted, but when I ran this report, they were actually posted, so I was able to just get them right up through the end of December. Now, there is some in the budget um, to cover some lunch expenses um, for this year, and next year's budget even has more because we do it every year. We might as well just put it in the budget. Um, there's about $8,500, I think, in the budget this year uh, to cover some lunch expenses. But as you can see, you know, and Diane does a great job, and she spends a ton of time chasing these negative balances down. <clears throat> she typically whittles it down. I usually wait until August to actually do the transfer because they keep coming in through July. But she really chases them at the end of the year and gets it down to two or three thousand dollars. But you know, it's, it's a lot of work for her. You know, there's emails, phone calls, letters, I mean, all kinds of stuff that go home, and, you know, ultimately that's what we get it down to. But, yeah, this is, uh, you know, it's a decent amount to be in the hole in, at the end of December, certainly. Yeah. Oh. And then, the next thing we had was the capital plan. Um, this was kind of just... A question as to what we'd like to do um, with the plan at this point in time. We did not get the locker room remodel, um, nor did we get the tech upgrades or the full-size school bus. So um, we're kind of just looking for direction as to where you'd like to go with that. Uh, you know, do we want to just move them out? Well, the locker room remodel, we didn't ask the town because that's MSBA. Right. But it was, the, I think you were looking across here, because actually the tech upgrades, we had requested the amount that would have covered two years. Mm -hmm. right. So it was the bus. My sense is from the finance committee meeting, go back to the tech upgrades request. I mean, those are essential, right? I mm -hmm. see both of those as essential to uh, tech and bus. And, um, you know, maybe we split out the tech upgrades this year and ask, um, not combine it to the hundred grand that was asked. Um, I'm, I'm assuming if we go again that the bus would have to be in an override. Um, Probably what uh, Chris did 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 do some um, investigating about um, what we can do in terms of renting a bus from Five Star when we need it for athletics, for a spare, for um, other things, so we do have a backup option. I do, if we're going to go for the tech upgrades, again, even if we're going to split that out, I should have told you this, we do need to decide tonight, just tell us, let's decide what we want, because I have to get that, February 4th is the warrant, uh, the warrant closes, so I have to get the warrant articles. When I turn in the budget number, I have to turn in the warrant articles. So if you're looking to have it on the spring, for tech, we just have to say, this is what we're going to put on, and this is the amount that we want. Is there, so I like the idea of just thinking strategically about going back with the tech, the 63, but not the bus, and finding an alternate. I feel like if we go back straight to the public with the bus again, they'll say, well, we just rejected you. Yeah. Well, especially if we're looking at a 4% increase. Yeah. So okay. I just want to um, clarify. The, I, didn't, I wasn't at that meeting, mm -hmm. but it was a very slow attendance. Is that true? Which election? Yeah, that, that where the bus was rejected? No, it was no, a ballot. Yeah, that was it. Because it was an override. That was all, like, the whole override was rejected. Of, no, it was approved at the town meeting. There was, right. there was good but attendance the at the actual that. number of votes, I mean, I remember when I came in to vote, I was 100, and that was about like, 3 or 4 in the mm -hmm. afternoon. So, Every override was rejected. Yeah. 
So it, it, I don't see it necessarily as a glaring, you know, statement to this school that we are on the wrong track necessarily when n equals 100 versus what is up around a spring election, especially when we have open seats. Yeah, I didn't see it as a statement to the school. I saw it as an overall statement that there's, yeah. you know, I think they said 30, I'm going to say 36% of our population here is considered seniors. 37. 37. That's in my memory. And, um, at, at, at many of the town meetings, I hear that there are many seniors on fixed incomes, and they cannot afford to continue to take on a higher hike in their taxes. Mm -hmm. So I just saw it as a, a across the board, you know, not anything, any statement yeah. about us schools or a particular initiative. Well, I heard from a lot of parents who said, I didn't even know there was a vote. And actually, I was driving to pick up my daughter from school, and that's when I saw the vote sign, and I came in to vote. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wouldn't have otherwise. So I, I don't even know if it's a signal that um, from like a an outright signal from all the seniors in the town saying that we're on fixing the town again. Hey, I think it's probably somewhere in between. And I'm just I just think we, we like uh, slaved it for the wrong election cycle. Well, you know, there's something to that, right? So the people who voted no, we're gonna vote no. We could vote no again. Are we going to are we going to frustrate others who voted yes? Probably not. If they voted yes, then they'll vote yes again, and maybe we can drum up some support this time. Just again, a spring election brings out about thirteen to fifteen hundred people, right? And we had what one hundred fifty this time around. No, it was that like four hundred. Yeah, I was going to say it was four hundred. So I don't think it would upset anybody if we put it on the ballot again, but my question would really be, because the two items that we had on Albright, because the whole right was rejected, right. and we're looking at putting Univents and Locker, that's my question, Univents and Locker Room, because that was initially what we were putting on this spring, yeah, we I thought. That so we, that, we were hoping to hear from the MSBA. Right. Our still goal was that the MSBA would help us fund that. So then that would get, we would talk about moving that, so then the only two things potentially we would have on the ballot for the spring would be, or for town election would be technology, technology yeah. and potentially buses. So what I don't know is the alternative for buses. Is that a viable? It's like as needed. Yeah, we can um, rent a bus from Five Star, which, you know, they're the vendor that we use for yeah. the outsource transportation. Um, it's actually not a bad cost. Um, it's about $93 a day. Um, so that's fairly cheap. Um, <clears throat> the downside is that we're not certainly getting their newest bus. Um, no. You know, they're <laughs> basically they get a rental. They, yeah, I mean, you, you know, right. You know, if you've rented a car sometimes. Yeah. Um, and so that's, you know, Trisha has commented, oh, you know, I've seen nicer buses. And it's like, yeah, well, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, ultimately it passes inspection, you know, both for safety and for, uh, you know, mechanical soundness. But, you know, mm -hmm. it's. I guess that's about where it stops. And the subject, I, I suppose that another thing to consider with that is that we are, so there's some unknowns around the bus, right? So one unknown is that if we do this rental, we are assuming that we maintain the same, uh, the same relationship that we have with the five star. Of course, there's nothing, they're not, they don't have to continue to provide it at that particular rate. We could also, in a future bus bid, things can change, right? So. Um, we could find ourselves not having that option, but we don't know that at this point. The other thing that's a little bit up in the air is where, and I don't foresee the district making any major moves next year, but around that start time task force. Like, what implications will that have for transportation? Um, so if there were a place where, where you were looking to take any sort of pause, I might, and I really would defer also to Chris chime in. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take any events somebody says, no, that's crazy, let's just go for all of this. But if there were a space where people were thinking, does it make sense to be a little bit more strategic? And honestly, what I would love to know is what is slated for an override and what isn't. To be able to know that. Okay, right. Or have an idea how many people are going to try to put the same items right. that... Mm -hmm. That would be... Because I think the override probably... Um, that gets to the point that you're saying. So it's not like there's certainly people are supportive of schools, but an override is in addition to what happens annually, right. which is valuation and 
regardless, there's an increase every year. And there were about six items, I think, in the overhead. Right? I can't remember. I, mm -hmm. I, I think if we're going to prioritize anything, it should be something that is like a direct service to kids. And it seems like technology upgrades, we can you know, see it, use it, utilize, implement it. Mm -hmm. It's maintaining an initiative that's been long standing. We've got a solution for you know, bus as needed. And we have a lot of future initiatives that are, um, you know, building related, athletics related, mm -hmm. just more functionality services related than necessarily direct impact to, in kids' hands. And it would be good to, I think, in light of how the last election <laughs> shook out, that we maybe show that that's where our emphasis is. That's what we really need to be. Right getting support on. Um, that's I, I think in support of that, uh, I would definitely want to go back with the entire tech upgrade rather than piecing it mm -hmm. into two years. Um, I wouldn't want to take locker rooms off the table altogether. Um, I don't think that's the right thing to do by our girls. So what would that mean? Pushing it forward a year, I guess. Oh, I see what you're yeah. saying. So 2021? So, yeah, we don't abandon it altogether. Well, I think we still, oh, yeah. my sense is we're still hoping that the MSBA comes forward. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we continue planning for that. And then we move along with us. I don't know if there's a difference in asking the city for, the town for 63 versus 100 for the two years. Who knows in that finance meeting? I'm not sure if you could do the, I think the 63 itself is so big it might need to move around. It's worth asking him, Christian. Yeah, it is. Um, that, I mean, they were combined at the request of the town. Yeah, the town had combined. Um, we were there. I was at that finance meeting. We just said, hey, why don't we just put it all together? I thought it was because we we're going to have to ask for an override anyway, and, and rather than keep coming back, let's put it together. Yeah. But if there's a value of splitting it up and we don't need to ask for an override in the first tranche, that yeah. would be nice. Because it did pass on yeah. how we yeah. So that's the thing about, that's why I say that question about, mm -hmm. I wish I could know that up front, because that does factor into decision making in terms of likelihood of success. Um, so what we can do is find out from the town what they recommend. Yeah. And then I'll assume that's the Warren article that we will put on this time. We'll update the other items and use our immediate fix for the time being on transportation. Okay. Great. Anything else for business manager reports? Good. Okay. School committee reports. Policy. We just did our second reading. Anything else? Right. No. We have a, a, another meeting by the Mike Hutchinson. What policies are you working through next? Yeah, whatever comes next. Uh, whatever uh, comes uh, next. Uh, we'll pull it out. Jay, making our way through. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, start time task force. So for that, um, right now we are reviewing possible options for start time transportation options and recommendations from CES. We didn't have a meeting um, this month, mm -hmm. um, but people are just able to provide their feedback. Um, um, either through email or through the share drive to kind of make suggestions or figuring out whether or not, um, you know, what the value is of asking stakeholders if we have focus groups to kind of meet with target groups to determine um, certain target questions that we want to ask those groups, or surveys or whatnot. Yeah, so in the state of just providing feedback right now. Thanks for we'll meet again next month. Yeah, actually quite early. I feel like it's next week is when we meet, but I will have... I did hear back from CES, so I will have a proposal for if they were to manage some of the um, doing the surveys and getting feedback. And so I'll have a proposal for the Start Time Task Force, and then we can bring it to the school committee, depending on what the task force thinks. Great. Um, finance Tri Board, just the all boards meeting. That's that was the most recent thing. I need to see what our next Tri Board meeting is scheduled for. There is a finance meeting scheduled on Wednesday, but that's I don't think it's a Tri Board. I think it's a finance meeting at six thirty. Yeah. But I was going to try to do the best to be at it. Fields, CP. We got that date. Yep. Good. All right. And collaborative. There is a. Uh, 
board meeting this Wednesday. I don't have time, unfortunately, but as soon as I receive materials, the executive director's report, I'll forward it on to the team. Great, thanks. <coughs> and I'm on the finance committee. Oh, great. Yeah. Excellent. So let's go through and make sure we did all the action items. Service learning trip, yes. Nature's classroom, yes. Boston, yes. Warrants, approval of the AP warrant submitted in November 2019. So, motion to approve the warrants from November 2019. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I will abstain. Is there an approval for the warrants, the payroll warrants submitted in November 2019? So moved. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Is there an approval for the AP warrant submitted in December 2019? Well, we haven't met. <laughs> Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there an approval motion to approve warrants submitted in December 2019? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, any questions about the November 20th, 2019 minutes? Good question. Motion mm -hmm. to approve? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We approved Hartsbrook. Acceptance of Tina, it's really embarrassing. Of town. We just leaned over to each other and I'm like, what, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> so that may have to come back because it was right. probably in November. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of us know. know what it is. I just looked at my email, money. but I was back into yeah. October. Maybe. So, yeah, we don't, we don't know what that is, but maybe you'll see it in February when we That's figure it out. That's a nice surprise. Yeah. So I'm yeah. fairly certain that we have received something and we'll make sure you get the right product. Yeah. Okay. okay, sounds okay. good. It's very kind of that person. Yeah. Yes, we will be doing it. Once we know what it is, we will. Thank you properly. Well, that's right. <laughs> Make sure that I have it already. And then I think this was somebody, if I remember you saying right, somebody wanted to pay um, towards yes. accounts. I yes. believe it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I remember it's just yeah. five hundred. Yeah, I think I remember yeah. that. Yeah. 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 We probably already approved it, so yes. we want to look. All right. Okay. We'll we'll revisit that next time. Uh, increase in substitute rate, we did that. School mm -hmm. choice participation, we're definitely doing that. And <laughs> second reading of the policies, we did that. All right. Regular Next regular meeting. It's yeah. supposed to be February 24th. I was going to send out an email. That's going to create a problem for me. Uh, that's the fourth Monday. Yeah, I'm out also. Um, and you're also out on that date. Yeah. And the 17th is President's Day, so I don't know if. We could look at March 2nd as our February meeting, because March has several Mondays, too, if you like. I'm um, out that Monday as well, but you are. Um, you oops. can meet without. We could also do, um, I can email options, too. I'll make sure I do that to yeah, that's that's too. Thank and you. 